What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. So, the other day I was asked on stream, what do I think are the top 5 Pokemon in the format right now? And before we get into it, I just have to say, technically, we still don't know what the official rules are. We're sort of just playing what we assume they are, because in, I don't know, in VGC 2017, we were allowed to use the Tapus, uh, and it was basically just a regional dex thing. Uh, in VGC 2020, we were allowed to use every Pokemon in the decks except for the box legendaries. So what we're assuming right now is that these Paradox forms are going to be legal, along with the uh, Ruinous Qua was it, Quartet? Yeah, that's the word, Ruinous Quartet. Uh, and yeah, so that's the format that we're playing. It's just standard VGC with those guys illegal. Obviously, Koridon and Miraidon are not legal because they are restricted uh, legendaries. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're basing this off of, and that's the format we've been playing. So all of my opinions are based off of that. This video might be outdated by the time December 1st rolls around and we have our official rules, but let's just go ahead and get into it. If you guys enjoyed this standpoint in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And that's my comment question of the day. What do you think are your top five Pokemon for this format? Or what's just number one? Let me know. Anyways, uh, this is going to be unscripted. I'm just going to talk off the cuff, but I'll try to edit it to be at least a little bit interesting to see. So at number five, I have Chi Yu. Now Chi Yu is one of the Ruinous Quartet, and what gives it so much value is its very nice typing and dark and fire that it shares with Pokemon like Incineroar. However, this Pokemon isn't nearly as physically bulky as Incineroar. Its 55 HP stat and 80 defense makes it a little bit difficult to switch in on certain hits. However, all of its special stats are extremely high at 135 special attack, 120 special defense, and 100 speed. Uh, and what really gives it that value, what really makes it pack a punch, is its ability Beads of Ruin. Now, Beads of Ruin is really interesting. When this Pokemon's on the field, every other Pokemon that is active has their special defense stat passively reduced by 25%. So your partner has this uh, redu uh, reduction, but also the two opponents have that reduction. Now, that effectively makes this one of the best wall breakers that we have. I'm currently running a choice spec set with Heat Wave, Dark Pulse, Psychic, and Snarl, and basically nothing is able to switch in on a Heat Wave. Arcanine can take it pretty okay because it's naturally bulky, uh, but when you combo this thing with like special wall breakers like Partner Fluttermane, uh, it's going to be very difficult for people to switch in on this thing. And just generally speaking, you don't even have to like choice specs it. Choice Scarf is, has just as much value, and I've even seen some people run like Assault Vest sets with Ruination as one of their final moves. So it's it's just like a really solid Pokemon. It's extremely difficult to deal with. It can effectively one-shot Amoongus like for free. Uh, and it's also very useful for dealing with opposing uh, Garganical because they're mainly going to be boosting their physical defense stat and investing a lot into special defense since it has that decent special defense stat. Uh, so having that passive reduction will allow you to more easily break it with partner Pokemon. So yeah, that's going to be my number five. For number four, we have Roaring Moon. Now, I personally haven't used this one that much, but I have faced it quite a bit. Roaring Moon is the paradox form of Salamence. It's going to get a uh, boost in whatever stat is highest from either holding the booster energy item or by having the sun active via protosynthesis. So this thing's stats are actually kind of crazy. It feels like it has pseudo legendary stats, but it's actually lower than Salamence as far as base stat total goes. Um, but it's, it's like more min-maxed, you know? So it's got 105 HP, 139 attack, uh, 71 defense, 55 special attack, 101 special defense, and 119 speed. So effectively, this thing's special attack is completely unusable, uh, but at the benefit of making it decently bulky, super fast, and like, it, it has like glass cannon stats, but also a really good HP stat. Like, that's the thing. Uh, you don't expect this thing, like, you don't expect Pokemon with like, glass cannon offensive stats to actually be able to take a hit so no it's not like a glass cannon this thing's more like uh i don't know tin foil cannon aluminum can we'll go with aluminum cannon that's that's how i call it aluminum isn't that strong but it's an aluminum cannon um and it's it's just like really powerful uh, a lot of people are running uh, a few different terror types on it because dragon dark isn't that great when you're getting outsped by fluttermane under every situ uh, every single situation uh, you'll be one shot by fairy moves is the main downside so the main terror types that people are using on it right now are things like flying steel i've seen some people just double down into either dark or dragon to remove the times four um 
But the reason that flying is so good is because it's going to activate booster energy and it's going to allow this thing to have one of the strongest acrobatics in the game. Acrobatics is a 55 base power move that will double in power if it uh, has the item removed or used up or if it's just like not holding an item. So basically on switching, you get uh, a boost to whichever stat is highest. Usually it's going to be your attack stat because if you run just max speed, max attack, you're going to end up with a slightly higher attack stat. Um, and you're going to get basically a free life orb boost on top of having your acrobatics boosted uh, to 110 base power. Uh, it also has access to stuff like Dragon Dance, uh, and it can still use its original steps with either Crunch or Dragon Claw. If you're crazy, you can use Jaw Lock. I'm pretty sure this Pokemon gets that. Yeah, so the only issue with Jaw Lock is while it does prevent the opponent from switching out, it also prevents you from switching out. So it isn't the best. Crunch is usually better. Uh, it also has Iron Head, and of course, if you want to Terra into pretty much any other type, Terra Blast is still a solid option at 80 base power. Uh, this thing is very difficult to stop once it gets going with like a dragon dancer too especially if it turns into that steel type uh your main answers for it are basically going to be like arcanine uh and amoongus is 100 percent out the window because you're no longer able to clear smog it as a steel type so it's, it's very scary and obviously you can't assume it's going to be steel type on team preview uh like because it could be a flying type and your amoongus is just gone anyways uh this is intimidate food and I will say one of the better ways of dealing with this guy is going to be uh, Chen Pao, that new ice type that lowers defense by 25%. Uh, it's, it's very strong. It didn't make my top five, though. Uh, but yeah, very good Pokemon. Now, my number three is going to be Arcanine. Now, Arcanine is arguably like the top three you can like interchange them but i think arcanine is a little bit weaker than the other two mainly because its role can be done by a few other pokemon so arcanine is a very very useful utility fire type it has 90 hp 110 attack 80 defense 100 special attack 80 special defense 95 speed it feels weird recapping that because everyone's known this since gen 1 uh but it has the ability to intimidate and it has a very wide move pool of support moves. Uh, it's got Will-O-Wisp, Snarl, Helping Hand. It used to have Safeguard. It doesn't anymore, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but it's like a really good support mod. It's sort of like, um, not Incineroar. It, it plays different from Incineroar because Incineroar is very pivoty. Arcanine is more stay on the field and debuff things. Uh, but yeah, it can also go pretty offensive. 110 base attack uh, means it's able to use that Flare Blitz pretty effectively. Uh, it's like physical move pool is also quite uh, wide. You can run like an offensive set with like assault vest, uh, wild charge, close combat. Uh, a lot of cool things that this guy gets, but for the most part, it's going to be that support set. Uh, and its natural bulk along with speed allows it to deal with almost every Pokemon. If you're facing like a Gyarados, if you will that thing, it not only did it get intimidated, but now it's Willowis, but it's like done. Um, it walls out Scizor. Fluttermane, as strong as it is, does not like facing Arcanine because you're never going to one-shot it with Shadow Ball. Uh, and it's also going to be able to snarl you to prevent, to prevent it from getting like Calm Mind boosts. Or even if it wants to go for like just the special attack boosting uh, protosynthesis, uh, it's not going to be able to break an Arcanine after a single snarl. Uh, and typically you can run these guys with like Citrus Berry, Figgy Berry. I like Safety Goggles because it makes it easier to take on Amoongus teams under Trick Room, but it's one of the most splashable Pokemon, and I think it's near throwing if you don't have something similar to this on almost every single team right now. But yeah, Arcanine, very strong. For my number two, it's going to be Amoongus. Now, Amoongus is one of the most important Pokemon to have right now, in my opinion. This format is so filled with setup Pokemon, it's insane. We have Dragon Dance Gyarados, we have Dragon Dance... Um, Dragonite, Roaring Moon, we have Body Press, Iron Defense, Garganical, I've seen some Calm Mind Fluttermane, I'm one of them actually. A lot of Pokemon love setting up. Oh, also um, Azumarill, Azumarill Belly Drum is, is quite strong. There's a lot of Pokemon that can set up in this format that want to set up and then like sweep. Uh, Amoongus is is the, the, the great barrier between them and breaking the format. Uh, a lot of people have said, I don't, oh, also, sorry, I'm missing this one. As the Dawn Ductor, I must uh, admit, Don Dozo does get countered by Amoongus. Uh, that, that, that one's a free one in case you guys want to stop losing to me with Don Dozo. But yeah, uh, Amoongus counters Don Dozo as well very effectively with Clear Smog. It's going to it's gonna remove all stat boosts. Um, and Amoongus also has that really natural bulk at 114 HP, 85 attack, 70 uh, defense, 85 special attack, 80 special defense, and 30 speed, meaning it's one of the most threatening trick room Pokemon also. Uh, Spore is a 100% accurate sleep move that will allow it to shut down at least one Pokemon every game pretty much. Uh, and it has access to Rage Powder for redirection and its ability regenerator will allow it to not only just have like that natural bulk, 
but when you switch out and switch back in, it's effectively the same as if you had like a Figgy Berry. You, you will get 30% of your health back. It's an insanely useful Pokemon. Uh, and while I think it's like a bad Terra target, for the most part, you won't want to Terra your Amoongus because it's mainly just there to soak up hits. Uh, you basically need something similar to this on every team. It's a lot like Arcanine. Uh, while you don't need Arcanine specifically, you need something that fulfills a similar role to Amoongus, whether it be Redirection from Ndidi, Clear Smog from Torkoal, or um, or Gastrodon, something like that. Something to control the uh, ability for your opponent to sweep you with setup moves. It's, it's quite a strong Pokemon. But yeah, and finally at number one, you guys all saw this one coming, Fluttermane at the moment is the strongest Pokemon in the format because it benefits from every other Pokemon on this list to the point where this list, I have five Pokemon on it, is pretty much a team. Like if, if you add like a water type, like a Gyarados, you got like, you got like a team there. Uh, but yeah, Fluttermane, one of the most broken Pokemon ever. Uh, well, not really. Honestly, it's just kind of broken in the context of like, we have a limited dex. There are a lot of things that deal with it. Uh, Scizor for one is quite good. I actually really like using uh, Terra Steel Bullet Punch Hariyama right now. Uh, it's very cool, but Fluttermane, 55 HP, 55 attack, 55 special defense, and then 135 in special attack, special defense, and speed. This thing is so min-maxed, it is insane. Uh, on the physical side, it can't take a single priority move, really. Um, but, you know, that's why Arcanine is so good for it. Uh, and also, Protosynthesis, or Booster Energy, either one, uh, if you invest into Timid, Max Speed, Max Special Attack, you're going to end up with a speed boosting thing. Uh, this thing becomes faster than Regieleki at that point. Uh, allowing you to use moves like Icy Wind for one of the best speed control methods in the game, and Terra Fairy or Terra Ghost to get an adaptability boost on your stab moves is insanely difficult to switch in on for a lot of Pokemon. Uh, like I said, you need something like Amoongus or Arcanine to deal with this guy, or some kind of Steel type uh, with a priority move to uh, annihilate it. Uh, there's a lot of things that this Pokemon can do for you on a team. Uh, whether you want to run that speed boosting one that uh, will just run through everything like uh rain teams will be using golduck right now because that's like one of the better swift swimmers on the special side you outspeed golduck at plus two because of your plus one booster energy stuff it's super super strong um the pressure that you get from it just being on the field is also really cool because a lot of pokemon or a lot of players will like switch out their pokemon and like protect one of them just to make sure they can get in and like deal with this thing but if you know that they're going to switch, you can just like calm mine that turn and then the next turn uh, Terra into Fairy and smack him with like a Moonblast or a Dazzling Gleam and then just annihilate them anyways. Yeah, this Pokemon is really scary. Um, its speed stat is contested only by things like, uh, I believe uh, Chen Pao is like marginally faster. No, it speed ties with Chen Pao and it loses uh, to Iron Bundle in terms of speed. Uh, so yeah, like there aren't a lot of things that outspeed this guy. Dragapult is one of them. But the only issue with Dragapult is you only outspeed the special attack boosting booster energy set. If they're speed boosting booster energy, they always outspeed you, uh, leaving you to have to use something like Scarf Dragapult, which is not that great. So yeah, that is my list of my top five Pokemon for this format. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, yeah, let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.